by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Almighty Lord, Lord and everlasting God, vouchsafe we beseech thee to direct, sanctify, and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of thy laws, the works of thy commandments, that through thy most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. We beseech the Almighty God to look upon the hearty desires of thy humble servants. <coughs> and stretch forth the right hand of thy majesty to be our defense against all enemies. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Here begins the sixth chapter of the book of the book of Deuteronomy. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land, whether ye go to possess it. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thou, thy son, and thy son's sons, all the days of thy life, and that the days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words, which I command thee these days, shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them <coughs> diligently unto thy children. And thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thine house, and on thy gates. And when the Son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What meaneth testimonies, and the statutes, and the judgments, which the Lord our God hath commanded you? Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord shewed signs and wonders, great and sore, upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his households, before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in, to give us the land which he swore unto our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive, as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness, if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he hath commanded us. Here ended the lesson. The epistle is written in the fifth chapter of Ephesians, beginning at the first verse. Be ye therefore followers of God, as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savour. But fornication and all uncleanliness, or con convertedness, let it not be once named among us, as become saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that we who monger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in thy kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes <coughs> darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and hath no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of these things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Whether he say, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks. 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 The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit, let us pray. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel is written in the 11th chapter of Luke, beginning at the 14th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus was casting out a devil, and it was dumb. And it came to pass, when the devil was gone out, the dumb spake. And the people wondered. But some of them said, He casteth out devils through Beelzebub, the chief of the devils. <clears throat> and others, tempting him, sought of him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself 
is brought to desolation, and the house divided against the house falls. If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because you say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub, and if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. But if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. When a stronger man than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted, and divideth his spoils. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest. Finding none, he saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out. And when he, when he cometh, he findeth sweat and garnish. Then goes he and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps which thou hast sought. But he said, Yea, rather, better are they that hear the word of God, and keep it. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father of Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten God of God, the begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, the begotten not made, the being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and stood on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you all for being here. And we've got some visitors this morning. Somebody brought a friend. No, the rest of you is okay to copy. <laughs> Remember last week, my parting shot as I left was, it's okay to copy Jesus. Somebody did. So, the rest of you guys can do that too. Father Hines is out of town with his son for a deserved couple of days off. He'll be back tomorrow the next day. So, thanks all. If anybody has a crisis in the meantime, call me or the senior warden. Somehow or another, we'll figure it out, but I don't expect there'll be a problem. Um, we got a couple of things coming up. The 23rd and the 30th, we're having an even song service, which most of you know that's evening prayer set to music, but very much follows the old English even song service. In fact, 
Is this exactly the same thing? Uh, pretty much. Uh, what time is the demon song? Uh, I think it's 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. Anyway, it's worth coming. And this is a good opportunity. This is the, just like the lesson and carols we did back before Christmas. It's a good opportunity to bring your friends and introduce some people to our church. Now, if they don't join, that's okay. It's nice to let you know your friend, let your friends know how we worship. Some people won't even watch it. So uh, please, bring friends. Um, the light boxes are still in the back, still going on. And uh, they're for a very good cause. Of course, I have a vested interest. <laughs> Please support that. All of that money goes to our seminary, to St. Joseph of Paralympia. That's where Father Heinz was trained. It's where I'm taking classes. Abel's been taking classes. And uh, I keep asking him, does he have a date yet for his ordination to the diaconate? And he keeps saying, well, they'll let me know. So uh, maybe by late spring or so, we'll have a, another vision. But don't get attached to him because he's only temporary. He's going to be a transitional vision all the way to priesthood. Me, I'm, I'm in perfect period. You guys are stuck with me. I'm not going to do that. So uh, the uh, Bible, let's Bible study every week, Bible Sapphira, Safari. It's getting better and better. Uh, it's worth coming a little bit early. It's between the 8 o'clock mass and this one. Back there in the classroom. And uh, it's very, very well done. Every time I go back there, I'm a little overwhelmed because it's done so well. I'm kind of confused, but it's very, very good. Uh, next ACW meeting is the March 25th. And Martha is manning the book cart outside. <coughs> and she's got some new stuff, I think. Doesn't that some new stuff? She has some new stuff. I think she did. Well, anyway, she's got it. So it's out there. Uh, does anyone have anything else in the way of announcements? Yes, what do you have? Um, on Sunday the 26th, we're actually baptizing uh, Parker and Kaylee. So you guys are all welcome to come and join us after for the reception. Um, I'm just going to go to the place. Thank you. I remember, remember when you were good from. I know. <laughs> you were my teacher. <laughs> well, at least one out of the class showed you. I mean, yeah. Anyway, thank you. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. I said it is more blessed to give than to receive.
there was one thing I left out of the announcements. I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, most of you have realized when you saw the book today, it's not very convenient today, it's a meeting of liberty. Uh, very similar, but slightly different. And in the process of doing that, we do this so seldom. Guess what I forgot? Before we do the offering for it, we're supposed to do the homily. So the bad news is, I was just reminded I forgot the homily, but you don't get out of it. So uh, anyway, I uh, I have this marvelous homily actually written by C.S. Lewis. Is everybody impressed? Well, I lied. It's written by me. So, uh, let's see what we can do with that. As I prepare a homily, I try to, remember, try to remember what did I say last week? Did anybody remember? Did I get through to anybody or did I just sit here and drone on? Well, some of you may remember last week my parting shot was God can't do God's work. It's okay to copy Jesus. Remember that from last week? It's okay to copy Jesus. It's still okay this week. You can do it. But we have something different this week. Um, if I go back and look at the collect and the epistle and the gospel, the collect is setting up for the epistle, the epistle is setting up for the gospel. This is the way it's supposed to be, but half the time I don't realize that. So, uh, this week in our college, God has asked, uh, the college has God to defend us against all our enemies. The epistle, which is Ephesians, it follows the same general theme. Here, Paul speaks of walking as children in God's love and life. Again, both the college and the epistle are setting the theme for Luke's gospel. Now, Luke's gospel is very interesting. It's different from the other three. Boy, is it. But the whole theme of the whole thing is hearing and doing God's work. So, if I had to come up with a title for this week, it's Hearing and Doing God's Work. Now, I hope you'll remember that during the week because we all know it's important to hear God's word, but most of us are not following up anymore. We need to do God's work. Now, when I say that, I don't mean you need to pick up the Bible and run out on the street corner and evangelize. There's people out there doing that. But one way you can do God's work is to be kind to your own family members. And something, you know, something we didn't do for ourselves. We just had our every member campus. Lord knows we beat each up over all that thing. We were so worried about our annual budget and all this stuff. Well, we, we got through it, and then we had our annual meeting, and we found out we didn't really meet our goals, but you know what? It's okay. We're gonna be fine. It's okay. You guys did better than you thought. You really should be getting, giving each other a pat on the back. We don't often thank each other enough. What about you and you and you and you? We need, we need to give each other a hug and say, I love you. Jesus loves you. We don't say that. We're Anglicans. Oh, we're cold and frozen. But we need to. We need to give each other a hug and say, hey, God does love you. It's okay to say that. It's okay to say, yes, you can talk to Jesus. So, anyway. And get back to the gospel. Which is... Uh, the 11th chapter of Luke, 14 verse. Oh, I love these quote scripture and verse. Absolutely nobody follows me. But uh, we just heard it, so I suspect most of you know what I'm going to say. This is where we see Jesus overcoming evil. He's really getting the best. Because Jesus has just cast out the devil. And that's, uh, that's a pretty good deal. The trouble is, the devil's still there. Just like you and I, if we beat the devil one second before we can turn around and say, boo scat, he just popped up somewhere. Remember the kids came, whack a ball, smack something here, it pops up there? That's the way the devil is. 
You beat him in, he was dead. He never quit. So we got to beat him. Anyway, the devil was still there in the form of the crowd. Jesus has cast out a demon. He's doing good works. And what's going on with the crowd? They're saying they're pointing fingers. They're saying, hey, you're doing that in the name of the devil. Not exactly what you'd expect for doing a nice deed for somebody. But that's the way it is. Once again, Jesus knew what they were trying to do. And he had his answer ready for them. He pointed out that the house divided cannot stand. And if he had been casting out spirits in the name of the devil, then the devil would be working against himself. Remember last week, the woman of Canaan, the Greek-speaking Syrophoenician woman with the daughter that was vexed by the devil? And the devil keeps talking up. Every time we turn around, there's something about the devil. Well, I often wonder, why did that woman's daughter have a devil? How did the devil get in hold of her? Was it her daughter's fault? Was it her fault? We don't really know. But this one was doing exactly what I'm talking about. She heard God's word and she did something about it. It was a woman approaching a strange man, which was not done in those days. It was a Gentile approaching the Jew, which was not done. And then she had the audacity to say, Jesus, take care of the daughter. You know, most of us probably might not be that brave. Jesus came in right now. All the things we've been wanting to ask him all the life. That if you walked in and sat down there, half, half of us would be afraid to, to go up and ask him. But it's okay. This woman was doing exactly what we're talking about. She was hearing and doing God's work. She had forsaken her Greco-Roman gods. She was living and doing her faith and taking action. Again, God's work. She had heard the words of Jesus, and she was very, very bravely acting on it. Now, the crowd was accusing Jesus of doing evil, and he shows them how they're wrong. This is also referenced or related to in Matthew 7, verses 7 through 17. Now, I'm sure everyone in the room knows exactly what Matthew 7, 17 is. Oh, yeah, everybody jump up on that. Well, every time I do anything like this and quote a Bible verse, I'm sitting here saying, if I had been studying this, I would know what you were talking about. I mean, Joshua 3.14, what am I talking about? Beats me, I don't have a clue. And I'll bet you nobody in this room does. So if I'm going to quote Matthew 7.17, 7, let me read you a couple of verses of it from a book you all like, the King James Version. Now this sounds like it doesn't fit with it, but think about it a minute and you'll see how it does. Ask and you shall be given, seek and you shall find. Knock and you shall be opened unto you, for every one that asketh, receive it, and he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Kind of catches up with you guys a little. Well, it'll take you a minute, but it'll settle in. While the crowd was doing, uh, accusing Jesus of doing evil, he was just showing them over and over again, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Kind of like my wife talking to me. You're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. You know, we've all heard that. So we know that Jesus' power is limitless. And here is Jesus pretty much arguing with the devil in front of these people. Why is he doing that? Well, we found out last week, one, he was healing this woman's daughter from last week. He was doing, he had been asked and he was giving. Just like it says right here, ask and you shall be given. So that's what he was doing. So he was trying to impress upon her, his mother, the, the girl's mother, that yes, he's the Messiah. Yes, it's okay to talk for a, a Jew to talk to a Gentile. This is where we found out that he's here for everybody, not just the Jew. But more than now, we see him taking on the crowd indirectly. And what's he doing? He is pointing out that 
He is stronger than the devil. The devil represents a strong man. Jesus represents a stronger man, the Christ. So once again, he's using three different ways to teach people things. Just like he's doing with us. The gospel this week references the gospel last week. I am looking next week and I'll bet you there's some references there. Anyway, at this point we're told in no uncertain terms, absolutely no uncertain terms, that neutrality with Satan is not possible. Don't cut a deal with the devil. It's like dealing with a terrorist. You're guaranteed to lose. That applied to Jesus then. It applies to us right now. Remember, we've got a job that's more important than anything we're talking about. And that's it's our first job. Our first job is to worship God daily, all the time. That's our job. And we got a second job too. It's a twofold thing. The second job is fighting Satan every day at every turn. Anytime you let something slide, Satan gets a little bit of trouble. So we need to be diligent and stop that happening. Now these sentences are a warning. They're unique to Luke. I remember, remember I said earlier that Luke was a little different than the other Gospels. Well, they uh, they show the spiritual that uh, they show that a spiritual relationship with Jesus is very very important, more important than family or church or supporting the church or this that or the other. Having a good relationship with Jesus that's what it's all about. Because if you have that, everything else will fall into place. <clears throat> this means that being blessed is a matter of both hearing and doing God's word. Just as it says in verse 28, <clears throat> blessed are those that hear the word and do the work. Jesus does imply judgment to all the people that don't respond to his message. This is where we get another familiar quote. Remember we did back there in 97? Well, here's another one. Faith without works is dead. We actually have to do something. Last week, we heard about letting bad thoughts hurt our souls. This week, let's hear about the necessity to both hear and do the word. Hearing is not good enough. You actually got to do something. Well, what is doing God's word? It's different for everybody. It may be opening the door for somebody. It may be giving somebody a ride when they want transportation. It's whatever. That's what it is. Anyway, that's your takeaway for this week. Please think of this as you go through the week. It's hearing and doing God's work. I've spoken this in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And now since I've got the operatory out of order, we'll go on to the kitchen. Thank you. You who do truly and earnestly repent your of your sins, enter in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, walking, <clears throat> intend to lead, lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time most grievously have seen up today. By thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, we do every man, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. 
the remembrance of self and the secret of sons of us, the burden of the is honorable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost about state to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. As a reminder, we are in a penitential season, so there is no glory. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. 